Hello. Our devotion for today, the uh, Monday after Christmas, is entitled, A Thoughts of a Heart. And it is uh, taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it, had, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took the baby up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And Mary and Joseph marveled at what was said about Jesus. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, she was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when Mary and Joseph had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned with their son Jesus into Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. In verse number 34, Luke writes, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed. A Simeon blessed Mary and Joseph, but what a strange blessing. For there will be struggling around her son, and a sword would even pierce Mary's soul. That's the kind of strange blessing that comes through Jesus, because he will be the dividing factor. He stands there like a rock, forcing the river to divide. The coming of Jesus is not a pleasant assurance that everything will be fine. No, it's a cry that says God's kingdom is here. Now is the day of salvation. Help is right here. The only salvation that makes it possible for all to be saved from wickedness. Many thoughts of the heart are revealed right here. The appeased, the contented, and the self-righteous are offended by these words. Because Jesus is a stumbling block for them. But the poor, the hungry, the unfortunate the exposed, and the destitute 
Come to Jesus with amazement and thankfulness that salvation is possible. They see an incredible gift that is offered to them here. Anna, Phanuel's daughter of the tribe of Asher, also came. She was a prophetess, one of the devout adherents to the Old Covenant, who had insights into the ways of God, who understood the sign of the times and could interpret what happened. She also spoke of a peculiar blessing. She embodied it. Surprisingly, she was one of the world's most fortunate people. Anna married in her youth, like most in Israel at that time, but then was widowed after seven short years. After that, she voluntarily lived her long life as a widow. She lived in the temple. She literally lived there, probably in some little closet that she was allowed to have for herself. She had very few needs. She fasted for long periods of time. She lived only to be near God in his temple. This, too, can be a mission in life. To witness to the joy of believing in God and knowing that you are his. A treasure that makes it possible to exist with nothing else and not miss it. She belonged to those who were still waiting, and yet she was so joyful that she was radiant. And we? We who are living in the fulfillment of time? What she saw a glimpse of in her 84 years has filled our life ever since childhood. How much happier, then, should we be? And how much have we already learned from those who were happy to wait because it is God that they are waiting for? Let us pray. Uh, many thoughts of the heart will be revealed through you, Lord. What is it that will be revealed in our hearts when we stand before you? But Lord, we ask that through the power of your word and in the Holy Spirit that you would fill our hearts with thoughts of thankfulness and great joy so that we may be welcomed by you with open arms on the last day. In your name we pray. Amen. God's blessings. I'll see you next time.